Hello everyone and welcome to the tiebreaks uh, of the fourth round of the uh, FIDE World Cup between Magnus Carlsen and Vincent Keimer. Uh, as you know, uh, when the two classical games are drawn uh, or one player wins one and the other player wins the other one, they go into tiebreaks and then uh, they have to see who is better. Now first they're going to play two rapid games with 25 minutes per player. Then if it's a draw, they're going to play two more rapid games with uh, 10 minutes per player. Then they're going to play two blitz games with five minutes per player. And if even that is a draw, they're going to play two blitz games with three minutes per player uh, and if that's a draw they're going to go into Armageddon so uh, this is the first rapid game and uh, we're also going to show the second rapid game in this video so let's check it out it's Magnus with the white pieces in the first game and he opens with pawn to d4 even though he got a win with e4 in the classical game he opts for d4 we have knight f6 c4 e6 and now knight to f3 we have pawn to d5 and now c captures on d5 we have e captures and knight to c3 uh, just a uh, nice exchange variation of the queen's gambit decline we have c6 and now queen to c2 something magnus often plays he played it against talireza he played it against yanni pomnishi and it's a very very solid line we have bishop to e7 by vincent bishop to f4 and now pawn to g6 preparing to play bishop to f5 to kick away the white queen so magnus of course has to get ready for this e3 he will block it with bishop to d3 bishop f5 attacks the queen bishop to d3 blocks and now we have a trade captures captures and knight b to d7 uh, we have pawn to h4 uh, the move that magnus also played uh, uh, against levon aronian although he lost that game uh, it was in uh, norway chess 2020 and Levon won a very nice game with the black pieces but in that game uh, pawn to a5 was played by Levon uh, here we have queen to a5 by uh, Vincent and it is now as of move uh, 11 that we have a completely new game so how does Magnus deal with this spin he plays king to f1 he says I will not be castling I'm going after your king so okay pawn to h5 uh, Vincent gets ready for that and now pawn to g3 we have castles by Vincent and now king to g2 we have rook f to e8 and now knight to g5 just putting stuff in front of vincent's king and now knight to f8 so again magnus a little bit better on clock uh, he has 25 minutes of vincent some 17 minutes on the clock and we have pawn to a3 of course preparing b4 so vincent goes back with the queen to help out with the defense and also to play a5 to stop magnus's b4 now he could play right away but he doesn't he plays rook h to e1 uh, first we have a5 now since Magnus did not play before Vincent stops it and now rook a to d1 sort of in the style of the old masters uh, putting rooks on d1 and e1 uh, we have knight 8 to h7 and now Magnus trades one of the knights knight captures on h7 and now uh, you could play knight captures on h7 but then uh, the knight no longer keeps an eye on d4 square so Vincent goes king captures on h7 and Magnus still goes for pawn to e4 maybe slow playing this with f3 controlling the knight uh, is the way Way to go but magnus decides to go uh, uh straight uh straight forward d captures we have knight captures and now queen to d5 uh, vincent neutralizes the position now uh the knight cannot move magnus plays queen to f3 to unlock this pin and now knight captures on e4 rook captures on e4 and now bishop to f8 again going for further trades we have rook captures on e8 and now rook captures on e8 capturing the queen here doesn't really do all that much for vincent because it uh, improves uh, the position of magnus's king and now for example if rook captures you just get d5 a bit more easily let's see see captures rook captures and now this rook is very nice going after a5 going after b7 uh, so you don't want to do this so after rook captures on e8 rook captures on e8 by vincent and now comes queen captures on d5 we have c captures and now rook to c1 and as usual magnus doing much better on time he has 20 minutes on the clock vincent only six minutes on the clock and uh, you should definitely go for a move like rook to e2 it's a very powerful idea just putting the rook on the second rank also putting pressure on b2 another idea might be rook to e6 going for rook to b6 then putting pressure on b2 but vincent goes for none of that he plays bishop to g7 first goes after the d4 pawn uh, but magnus thrilled to see this he plays bishop to e3 which blocks the threat of bishop captures on d4 and also prevents the infiltration of the rook via the e2 square so okay rook to e4 vincent will win the d4 pawn but uh, magnus has other pawns in mind rook to c5 we have bishop captures on d5 bishop captures and rook captures on d5 we have rook captures on a5 and now pawn to f6 there is no way to uh, defend the b7 pawn we have rook to b5 and now pawn to g5 now vincent will have to play this rook and pawn endgame being down a pawn against magnus carlsen rook captures on b7 
king to g6 and now rook to b4. Magnus goes for a, for a trade here. It's uh, very strange. He he didn't go for trade uh, captures captures and then pawn to b4, which uh, is definitely the way to go. He played rook to b4 first and now rook to d1. Uh, we have king to f3 and now comes king to f5. Vincent finds very nice moves here. King to e2 attacks the rook and the rook to b1. Of course, you have to put the rook behind the pass pawn. And a4, Magnus starts advancing the pawn. Uh, G captures uh, on h4. Uh, G captures and now rook to a1. Now putting the rook behind the past a pawn. And here we have king to e3. Uh, advancing the king forward. We have king to e5. And now uh, we have pawn to f4 with check by Magnus. And this is the move that allows Vincent back into the game. Uh, as uh, well, it's not a very precise move. The problem for Magnus, I believe, was as he had 15 minutes on the clock, Vincent had only some 30 seconds on the clock, and it wasn't um, uh, it, it wasn't the way to go. Uh, instead uh, of this f4 move, what Magnus should have played is f3. Just slowly build up your position, uh, maybe allow a few checks. Let's say rookie one checking to d3. Sorry, uh, uh, king to d3. You're gonna play rook back to a1, and after b3, okay, now let's say rook to a2 because Vincent does not have a move here now you play rook to b5 and you slowly start pushing that pawn to a5 pawn to b4 and so on there's always time to play uh, pawn to f4 and win that d5 pawn no need to rush it but magnus played pawn to f4 check right away and now comes king to f5 and now king to d4 we have king to g4 and now king captures on d5 we have king captures on h4 and now king to e6 we have king to g3 by vincent now he's also ready to start pushing his pass pawn to victory King captures on f6 and now pawn to h4. We have pawn to f5 and pawn to h3. Now you can see that there is no way to, to stop the pawn other than to give up the rook. King to g5, h2 and now rook to h4. And of course Vincent plays rook captures on a4. He tries to give up the rook for uh, the, uh, the h1 square. He wants the queen. Uh, but Magnus just plays rook captures on h2. He gives up a full rook but the passed pawn will also force Vincent to give up his rook. So pawn to f6 and now king to g3. Vincent still has to be very careful as he's pretty much the only one who can still lose this pawn to f7 and now rook to f4 of course now Vincent is also ready to give up his rook for the pass pawn king g6 king to f3 and now king to g6 now the rook uh, guards against this pawn the king will of course stop the b pawn and that's pretty much it we have king to e4 and now f8 queen Vincent of course has to give up his rook Magnus captures king to d4 and now Magnus plays pawn to b3 king to c3 and now pawn to b4 that's uh, some 20 moves too late to play pawn to b4 uh, as it was winning in many of the other lines. King captures on b4 and it is a draw on move 55 by insufficient material. So this is what happened in the first game of the Rapid uh, match. Uh, now let's check out what happened in the second game where of course uh, Vincent had the white pieces. Now this one is it's just absolutely incredible. So hope you guys are ready for this. Uh, Vincent opens with pawn to d4. We have knight to f6 by Magnus. Uh, c4 we have e6 knight to c3 and bishop to b4 already we are treated to a nice nimzo indian defense by magnus pawn to f3 the Khmoh variation and now knight to c6 we have pawn to e4 and now d5 is the standard move here magnus goes for pawn to e5 instead also uh, very much playable a3 attacks the bishop the bishop captures b captures and pawn to d6 now we have knight to e2 and pawn to b6 now preparing to fianchetto the light square bishop knight to g3 and now there is a game where castles was played but here we have knight to a5 and it is now as of move 9 that we have a completely new game so the standard stuff knight comes to a5 we'll put pressure on the c4 pawn uh, and uh, c5 is coming bishop to b7 is coming the usual nimzo indian stuff so bishop to d3 we have pawn to h5 by magnus now saying that he also is interested in attacking on the king side uh, as he tried in the previous game castles and now pawn to h4 by magnus we have knight to f5 and magnus happily trades captures captures and now queen to d7 but here uh, vincent is doing much better on time he's down to 20 minutes and magnus uh, uh, down to some 22 minutes on the clock we have rook to b1 and now queen side castles by magnus we have bishop to g5 putting pressure on the knight here pinning the knight basically and pawn to c5 not worried about opening up the position of his king uh, which could be a little bit dangerous. So while Vincent could try to open up the position, he decides to go for pawn to d5 instead. 
uh, rook to h5 attacking the bishop but vincent again plays the absolute best pawn to f4 now defends the bishop and asks magnus to capture on f4 so he can play bishop captures on f4 we have rook h back to h8 and now f captures on e5 d captures and queen to e1 now putting pressure on the h4 pawn uh, and also on the e4 pawn e5 pawn and here is where magnus finds this beautiful beautiful counter idea uh, pawn to e4 and now how do you react to this well vincent says all right uh, i'm gonna capture on f6 and then on e4 uh, but you you can't really do that vincent does capture here but now magnus plays rook d to e8 and both of the bishops are still hanging so now it's time to decide which one to move of course you're not gonna allow g captures on f6 and giving magnus the semi-open g file to attack you will play bishop captures on g7 and uh well defend your your bishop on g7 with a move like pawn to f6 so e captures on d3 we have queen to d2 and now rook h to g8 vincent plays pawn to f6 now vincent is down to nine minutes magnus is down to 14 minutes on the clock and now uh, there are two two really really awesome moves here one is knight captures on e4 the other is rook to e2 which one do you think magnus went for uh, let's uh, let's discuss knight captures on c4 attacks the queen queen captures on d3 and now knight e5 attacks the queen queen f5 you have to offer a queen trade and now well, you just trade queens and go knight d3 the game continues with chances for both sides on the other hand if you don't play for knight captures on c4 you could also go for the mating attack uh, but it still doesn't uh, quite work queen captures on d3 queen g4 threatens checkmate there's again queen f5 check now you have to again trade captures captures knight captures on c4 and we get a very similar idea so magnus finds a way how to complicate things and he plays rook to e4 and now vincent is uh well left with uh, this position and so many moves being possible uh, and he doesn't go for the absolute best one you have to play queen captures on d3 and just allow magnus to continue with his plan of doubling rooks on the e file but here vincent went for rook b to e1 and now magnus uh, has a winning position but look at this rook captures on e1 rook captures and now magnus played rook to e8 the winning idea here was queen to f5 uh, this defends the pawn on d3 and also threatens knight captures on c4 which will dislodge the queen and if you play queen f2 now you just trade let's say captures captures and now you pick up the pawn here and that's pretty much it uh, very much a winning position for black however magnus played rook to e8 and now vincent goes for rook to e7 this is much much better than rook captures on e8 so rook e7 rook captures f captures queen captures on e7 and now queen captures on d3 so you can see how it's a much different position where magnus lost the d3 pawn the knight cannot capture on c4 uh, as opposed to what we've just discussed queen to e1 with check queen to f1 vincent blocks this and queen to e3 check and now vincent doesn't want to draw vincent wants to fight king to h1 we have queen to e4 now ready to pick up on c4 and the h3 of course h3 is uh, also an idea the g pawn would be pinned so pawn to h3 and now pawn to f5 uh, starting to advance the pass pawn and here vincent needs to create a blockade on the f4 square but he doesn't he plays queen to f3 and now he offers magnus a queenless endgame with a winning position for magnus Magnus. Queen captures on f3, g captures and knight captures on c4. And now look at this. Uh, how is the bishop to help out with the defense uh, of the of the pushing of pawns on the queen side? There is no way to do it. Vincent plays pawn to a4, uh, but now Magnus plays king to d7. We have bishop to f6 and now king to d6. Magnus misses a very uh, a very awesome win here with pawn to a5. Problem is that after bishop captures, you have b5, and after captures, you have a4. And there's no way to stop the pawn. The bishop is helpless here uh, on this diagonal. That's just it. The, the king very easily stops the pass b pawn. Uh, completely winning for Magnus but when Magnus went for king to d6 bishop captures on h4 and king captures on d5 bishop to d8 by Vincent and now knight to b2 so make no mistake this is still completely winning for Magnus but you have to play precise moves h4 king to e6 h5 and now knight captures on a4 uh, we have pawn to c4 not allowing the uh, final capture and now king to f7 we have king to g2 and now knight to b2 and now the past a pawn can finally start marching forward of course not just yet as the b pawn would hang so king to g3 and now knight captures on c4 we have king to f4 and pawn to b5 now we have king captures on f5 and now pawn to b4 uh, magnus doesn't make a mistake from the previous game he plays that b4 move 
king to e4 and now Magnus plays pawn to a5 which allows Vincent back into the game the way to win this is pawn to b3 and now after king to d3 which seemingly stops the pawn now you play pawn to a5 and now a4 a3 and that's it you cannot capture the knight because b2 and the pawn is unstoppable so after king e4 a4 by Magnus but now Vincent finds the brilliancy that saves the game and that is pawn to h6 now why does this save the game well the same idea that we've shown in the previous move no longer applies pawn to b3 is met with h7 and after king to g7 stopping promotion there's bishop to f6 with check and now you have to capture otherwise vincent is getting a queen king captures on h7 king to d5 now and that's it you start eliminating everything on the queen side if b2 you happily give up the bishop knight captures king captures here and yes you can play a4 but after king to b4 that's it you're gonna lose that pawn as well king g6 you're gonna kick away the knight knight wherever king captures and it will be a draw uh, by insufficient material once the uh, df pawn is gobbled up so here king to g6 was played and now bishop to e7 vincent misses this incredible idea but he was only down to a few seconds on the clock uh, he has to continue with uh, pawn to h7 and uh, go, well uh, transpose into the line that we've just discussed king to d5 b3 and bishop to f6 and it's uh, the same line however bishop to e7 was played and now magnus is completely winning but you have to find this uh, it's not an easy move to find uh, and uh, well uh, what would you play here feel free to pause the video and win the game for magnus while i give you a couple of seconds So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on being uh, a true master of the endgame as usual. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is of course pawn to b3. This is the move that wins because after king to d3, there's knight to e3. And now the c2 square is unavailable to the, to the white king and also the c4 square and also the c3 square because of a tactic. And if you don't go there, you, you will be un, uh, um, well just uh, unable to, to stop the pass pawn. If you go here, knight to d5 check wins the bishop. And then black is of course just completely winning. But even Magnus misses this. He doesn't go for knight to... Uh, for b3 he goes knight to d2 with check king to d3 and now knight to b3 uh, but now king to c4 we have pawn to a4 and now vincent plays this brilliant bishop to g5 move with bishop to f8 defending the pawn uh, magnus still has chances but after bishop to g5 uh, it's now a dead draw uh, of course uh, you know per, uh, if, if everyone plays the absolute best move if you capture of course the, the h pawn marches forward so pawn to, uh, king to h7 was played and now bishop to e3. Now Vincent is ready to collect those pawns. Knight to d4 and now king captures on c5. We have pawn to a3, uh, bishop to c1. Another spectacular move. And now the problem is if you play bishop to b3 check, it's not that Vincent blundered the fork. This is the only move that draws him the game. Knight to b3 check, king captures on b4, knight captures on c1, king captures on a3. And then the black king just gobbles up those pawns and that's it. So after bishop to c1, one, uh, Magnus tried this final idea of knight to e2, uh, but it is again insufficient. King captures on b4, knight captures on c1, and king captures on a3. And he was in this position on move 55 that the players agree to a draw, as there is no way to push for anything here. The pawns will easily get eliminated by the king or by the knight, doesn't really matter. And that is it. First two rapid games end in a draw after, I mean, absolutely a uh, stunning uh, display of what could have been magnus uh, had a definitely winning chance in the first game he was up upon uh, well just completely winning and in the second game so many so many crazy lines where he could have won but in the end uh, both the games are a draw and vincent lives the fight another day we'll, we'll see what happens in the fast rapid time format uh, but that's uh, it for, uh, for for the two games uh, i would like to thank my wife uh, beats any wife at chess uh, angus cunningham uh, peter booth nagarjuna ponugoti and philip has uh, 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 Hengstenberg for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check to all my previous videos here. Thank you for watching and I will see you soon continuing the coverage of everything that's happening uh, in the tie breaks. Uh, well, until, until they finish. Uh, so thank you all. I will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day.